we're absolutely delighted. Uh, we're delighted because uh, it was a difficult rescue uh, and we're delighted because the casualty has done really well when considering everything that's happened. We're also uh, particularly pleased because there are so many different teams involved here uh, and other agencies that we're working with and it's gone so smoothly working together and, and that's a real source of pride for all of us. So many people are volunteers. Is it the spirit of kind of looking after one of your own that's, that's helped here? I, th I think so. I think um, uh, my colleague Paul always says that, you know, we're, we're cave rescuers because we're cavers. Uh, and if anything ever happened to us, we would hope to be rescued. So it's only right that we, we reciprocate. Can you tell us a little bit about the, the moment itself when the casualty moved out of the, of the cave? What was that moment like? Well, I, I guess we've been anticipating this moment for a good number of hours. Recently, we had some of the updates that we were in the final stages. But to get that news that he's finally out, he's on the surface, he's been well looked after, he's clearly ecstatic for all of us. And that sense of relief starts to kick in, but actually we've still got people underground to worry about. And we, we still need to make sure that that casualty gets to the care that he now needs. Uh, casualties are doing remarkably well. If you consider how long he's been in the cave, uh, how long he's been in a stretcher, uh, he's doing very well indeed. So uh, he's, he's being assessed at the moment um, and then we'll know more in a short while. Has he been able to tell you what happened, communicate, or has he been asking questions about what's happening above ground? Uh, so he's been talking to the medics along the way uh, and uh, they've been having a conversation, but we're waiting for them to come out now so we can have a conversation with them.